Our second story is called Mr. Messy, written by the same artists. Mr. Messy was the messiest person you've ever met in your whole life. He looked messy because he was messy in everything he did. You could always tell where Mr. Messy had been because he left a trail of messy fingerprints where he'd been. Oh yes, Mr. Messy was messy by name and messy by nature. Mr. Messy lived in a particularly messy looking house. The paint was peeling, the windows were broken, there were tiles missing from the roof, the flower beds were overgrown with weeds, the garden gate fell off, was off its hinges, and had Mr. Messy cut the grass in his garden lately? He had not. One morning, Mr. Messy woke up in his messy bed, yawned, scratched, stretched, I mean, <laughs> got up, cleaned his teeth, leaving the top of the toothpaste, had his breakfast, spilling cornflakes all over the floor, and then set out for a walk, tripping over a brush he'd been left lying in his garden two weeks before. There was a wood behind Mr. Messy's messy house, with the messy garden, and that's where he went for his walk. It was a particularly large wood, with lots and lots of trees, and it took Mr. Messy a long time to walk through it. But he didn't really mind, because he felt like walking that morning. So he walked and walked right through the wood until he came to the other side. And do you know what he found on the other side of the wood? Mr. Messy found the neatest, prettiest looking little cottage he had ever seen. It had a lovely little garden, with a stream running through the middle of it. There was a man in the garden, clipping the edge. He looked up as Mr. Messy approached. Good morning, I'm Mr. Messy, said Mr. Messy. I can see that, replied the man, looking him up and down. I'm Mr. Tidy, and I'm Mr. Meat. Mr. Neat, said another man, appearing out of the house. Tidy and neat, said Mr. Tidy. Neat and tidy, said Mr. Meat. We're in business together, explained Mr. Tidy, and the people who own this house have asked us to do some work for them. What sort of work? asked Mr. Messy. Oh, we make things nice and neat, said Mr. Neat. Tidy things up, added Mr. Tidy. Perhaps we could come along and do some work for you, said Mr. Neat, looking at Mr. Messy, who was looking even messier than usual that particular morning. But I don't want things neat and tidy, said Mr. Messy, looking downright miserable at the thought of it. Nonsense, said Mr. Tidy. Fiddlestick, said Mr. Neat. But, said Mr. Messy. Come along, said Mr. Neat. Off we go, said Mr. Tidy. But, but, said Mr. Messy. But nothing, said Mr. Neat. Said Mr. Neat. And bundling in into their van, which was parked behind the house, off they went to Mr. Messy's house at the other side of the wood. Good heavens, said Mr. Neat, when he saw where Mr. Messy lived. Good gracious, added Mr. Tidy. This is the messiest house I have ever seen in all my born days. They both said together at the same time. Better do something about it, said Mr. Neat. And before Mr. Messy could open his mouth, the two of them were rushing here and there about Mr. Messy's house. Mr. Neat hoed and mowed and pruned and snipped and clipped, and cleaned, and cleared, and dug, and made the garden look neater than it had ever looked before. Mr. Tidy cleaned, and primed, and rubbed, and painted, and mended and made the outside of Mr. Messy's house look tidier than it had ever looked before. Then they both went inside the house. Good heavens, said Mr. Neat for the second time that morning. Good gracious, said Mr. Tidy for the second time that morning. And they and then they set out by clearing the house from top to bottom. They brushed and swept and polished and scrubbed and made the inside of the house look neater and tidier than it had ever looked before. There we are, said Mr. Tidy. All finished, said Mr. Neat. Tidy and neat, said Mr. Tidy. Neat and tidy, said Mr. Neat. Mr. Messy just didn't know what to say.
Then they both looked at Mr. Messy. You thinking what I'm thinking? Mr. Meets said Mr. Tidy. Precisely, replied Mr. Tidy. What we're both thinking, they said together to Mr. Messy, is that you look much too messy to live in a deep and tidy house like this. But, said Mr. Messy. But whatever Mr. Messy said was no use, and Mr. Meat and Mr. Tidy whisked him off to the bathroom upstairs. It had been the messiest room in the house, but now of course it was neat as a new pin. Then Mr. Meat got hold of one of Mr. Messy's arms, and Mr. Tidy got hold of the other arm, and they picked him up and put him straight into the bath. Mr. Messy wasn't used to having baths. Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy washed and brushed and cleaned and scrubbed and, co and combed Mr. Messy until he didn't look like Mr. Messy at all. In fact, he looked the opposite of Messy. He looked at himself in the mirror. You know what I'm going to have to do now, he said in a rather fierce voice. Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy looked worried. What are, we, what are you going to have to do? They asked to Mr. Messy. I'm going to have to change my name, said Mr. Messy. Then they made chuckled. Mr. Tidy, Mr. Beat and Mr. Tidy chuckled. And then Mr. Messy laughed. And Mr. Beat and Mr. Tidy laughed. And then they all laughed together and became the best of friends. And that really is the end of the story. Except to say that if you're a messy sort of person, you might have a visit from two people. And you know what they are called? Don't you? That's right, Mr. Tidy and Mr. Meat. Time for our third story.